Hello and welcome to How to Deal When the Shit Gets Real podcast. I'm Rietta. And I'm Connie. And this is, you know, self-awareness day, I guess. I don't know. I don't have anything. We're, we're, the self-aware we're, cousins, we know we're full of shit. Done. But, That's yeah. what we're going over today. <laughs> I can't with you. I can't. <laughs> Anytime. We're all full of shit here. It's fine. And we're also going to talk about, uh, you'll, you'll understand that reference if you get through the whole podcast. Maybe. Maybe. If we explain it well enough, right? Right. And it's not just about being full of shit. It's being aware of a lot of other things. Yeah. A lot of other things. (laughs) Connie's making it sound way easier. It's being aware of, uh, you know, when shit gets real. (laughs) Just kidding. I don't know. I you're was just, trying to tie in the podcast title. It didn't really, it didn't go. You're just throwing out all the taglines. So self-awareness, who's self-aware? Raise your hands. Just kidding. We can't see you. <laughs> Maybe we can, you know, Google and Alexa are always spying. Maybe they can see them. Maybe they're looking out for us. I'm raising my hand. Just kidding. So there are two basic types of self-awareness. Internal and external. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And Hopefully you guys can figure out what internal and external mean, meaning you can find self-awareness in yourself and then, of course, in people around you. Yep. Uh, you know, I don't know which one I like more. Inter- I think I like external more. I don't want to think about my feelings, but I want to think about other people's feelings. But sometimes I am not so great with either, so it's fine. Well, and for me, I feel like being an empath, like I am definitely much better at picking up on other people than myself. And plus, you know, you're not always super honest with yourself. You don't always want to admit when you, you know, you don't always want to admit certain things because it's not easy. No, it for sure isn't. I feel like I do an okay job with some aspects and an okay job in other aspects. For others, like sometimes... (laughs) I just don't like you, so I don't take your feelings into account. I know you don't want to hear that, but it's true. Yeah, and of course, when something is happening to you and it's not the most positive thing, it's hard to think about the other person because you're so focused on being mad or upset or whatever that you're not always picking up on the external cues. Exactly. That's why I said I'm not, sometimes I'm just not as self-aware sometimes i choose not to be like i was like i don't care for instance Mm -hmm. i was at my in-laws and i was swearing because these people have always sworn so i'm just going along with you know how it's been in the past Mm -hmm. and they all got butt hurt because i swore and i'm like i have heard every one of you i have seen you guys hit each other like get into physical fights Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I say like F like I I can't even remember what I said, honestly. Uh, And then it's a problem. So I thought it was funny. Like I honestly thought that they were joking. So I kept swearing. I was like, I don't care. Sorry. Don't care. I'm such an evil person. It's fine. It's not a new person. You were just um, testing the boundaries, basically, and trying to figure out if they were actually kidding or if they were really trying to control the situation or not. Yeah, and it was, it was interesting. Um, I, I grant it. Like their grandma was there, who is barely coherent. She's had strokes. I don't even know if she can hear me, listen to me, or understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I honestly thought they were joking. And, huh. The day before, multiple days before, both my husband and his brother were talking massive shit. Mm-hmm. So I didn't think they gave two craps. They were sh- then they were throwing up gang signs, but I was the bad person for swearing. His st- mm-hmm. my uh, my brother in law was throwing up gang signs. I was like, I don't understand what's so different, right? And I just, then I, at, and at a certain point when I'm like, okay, I've seen you guys physically fight each other. Um, I've seen, I've heard massive blowout arguments in this house. I don't even feel bad for swearing. Sorry. Well, and that's actually a good example of external self-awareness because, you know, it shows, because external self-awareness is going to be that understanding of how people view 
us in terms of those same factors. So they're viewing you in a different way that maybe that you view yourself. And that's why they're like, why are you swearing? Why is this happening? Maybe. I mean, because I don't particularly end up swearing too much. But um, so I think they were also surprised at that. Because I'm normally not you a swear swearing. all the time. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but not normally around f- like other family. Not my cool cousin, Rietta, whom I, I'm allowed to swear around. And all of our li- all of our listeners, you know, they don't count either. No, sorry, guys. I clearly don't care anymore. <laughs> I've stopped caring is the problem. But yes, that was my one time I was like, I don't understand what is going on here. But it is like that just shows you the self-aware of being self-aware of others and others being self-aware of me. Or Right. Yeah. Know, it's, it's whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's it was your understanding of how they were viewing you. Yes. Yes. Which is external self-awareness. And then, of course, internal um, represents how clearly we see our own values, our passions, our inspirations and how they fit within into an environment. Um, and then, like, of course, our reactions and how they impact on others. For sure. And then I found like a nifty article like I do when we talk about stuff that's more psychological Mm -hmm. and basically for self-awareness, there are three different levels. It's distractions, your feelings, and basically like realizing you're human kind of. I don't have an, I don't have like a good title for that one. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Knowing your weaknesses is what I put put down. Knowing that you are human. Anyway, so let's go from the top. Distractions. Yo. Well, give us a rundown, Connie, of what uh, the oh, definition oh, thought- of distractions is. Well, I mean, you guys all know what distraction is. This podcast can be a distraction. Facebook can be a distraction. Instagram. Anything where you were on task and all of a sudden you're just doing something else and you kind of get, like, lost. And the little article that I read was basically like, you know, you don't have to get rid of every single distraction. You don't need to get rid of your computer and your phone. Like that's just too extreme. You don't have to get rid of everything. It's basically like time management. Mi- try to minimize your distractions so that you can focus on other thoughts of like self-awareness. Right. And like we talked about like before, that. you know, not getting caught up in social media, not being on your phone for 12 hours a day making time for the things that are important. So yeah, that's basically kind of what we covered before about getting lost in things and actually paying attention. And that's just your own awareness of being able to detect when you actually are distracted to be able to say, Hey, I need to get back on task. And there's also like a lot of things out there that can, which we've gone over before that can help you to stay less distracted. You know, there are now social media, like timers on your phone Mm -hmm. so that when you get to the acceptable amount of time that you like so say you put an hour you know I should only be spending an hour on social media a day when that hour is up your phone tells you yes you can technically ignore it but you shouldn't (laughs) or you can if you just don't have anything else going on today whatever right so being able to recognize your distractions all right so what was the next one uh, what you're feeling. This one I like even more. I well, guess. and it's, and I would definitely say that's more of a, probably a larger part of it because our feelings yes. are a large part of what we do and how we interact with people. And a lot of times, you know, our feelings take control over a lot of things. And basically, and they used that really funny, it's actually also a line in Hocus Pocus, where it's like, I'm not mad, you know? It's like, okay, stop saying that you're not mad when you clearly are. Like, you have to deal with it. Don't just be like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm fine. This is fine. Like, you need to stop with that and actually, like, deal with your emotions. Yeah, and you also don't want to end up making a scene. Like, maybe you do have a legit reason to be mad. Um, Connie and I took a test, which we'll go over later, and one of the questions in the test was, like, you talked about something with your coworker 
that was going to be something that you brought up at a board meeting as a new idea. And then the coworker presented it at the meeting as if they were, was their idea. And you could be upset about it, but you also don't need to stand up in front of the boardroom and like bash this person and be like, they stole my idea and like make a huge scene in front of the entire boardroom. There's a different, or there's yeah. a way to recognize your feelings and handle it in a mature sense. Yeah. And I totally picked the option for that question. That was like, cause there's like five. I picked the option that was you say, oh yeah, me and him, we were discussing it. And I also thought of A, B, and C so that you can come across the fact that you were working it on together, but not completely disproving right. the other person is the way I chose to do it. Yeah. And that was a good way to answer it. Cause that way you're like Connie said, you are showing that you were a part of it, but you're not also making a scene and discrediting your fellow um, yes. employee, you know? Yes, exactly. Which is the point. Um, so the other thing is actually they, they like touched this article touched on like meditation and like, it's one way where you can feel your emotions. We talked about this before. It's also a way that you can get in touch with your self-awareness, but for people who bod, I thought this was interesting. I didn't even think about it before. And I guess it's because I am not the kind of person who bottles up their emotions. Mm -hmm. So it's for people who bottle up their emotions. Uh, meditating can be like very overwhelming because then it just, it all comes out because all you're doing is you're sitting there thinking of your feelings mm -hmm. and thinking of yourself and self-awareness. So it, can be very overwhelming. I actually never thought of that before. I guess yeah. I was not be being very aware of others. <laughs> well, and actually, and another good place to really make note of that is obviously if you're in a relationship and I know I do it and I'm sure a lot of other people do where you kind of jump to this conclusion. Like if you're having a hard time in your marriage or your relationship and you think that your spouse is purposely not showing you affection or purposely, purposely not helping you around the house, but maybe there's something else going on. Maybe there's a reason and you're not considering the process of your spouse and what they might be thinking and maybe why they're not giving you affection or why this is not happening. You're, you're assuming and jumping to conclusions that, you know, it's all his fault or all her fault when there is usually another point to it. And then of course you're also not communicating. You're not, you're coming up with your own solution in your head and you're not actually talking about it. And once again, it's another thing where you have to think about your emotions and your feelings, you know? Right. Like, oh, this is just my gut reaction. It's not really how I feel. And so then the other like flip side to this number two little what are you feeling coin mm -hmm. is um, yes, uh, one, yes, therapy helps, but two, do not wallow in your emotions because you can end up going down basically like a deep dark spiral of of bad emotions and that's how some people can end up being like severely depressed in my as what i took from the article yeah absolutely because i could only ever imagine if you're going down to it this deep dark spiral of like emotional de like depression is the only other way to what to call this you know right so that's your feelings and all that. So what was the last one? I forget now. Oh, what, I forget. What was the last one? <laughs> it's basically like knowing your weaknesses. And I thought he was this article. I'm pretty sure it was a guy. <laughs> um, he was like, just realize that this is all bullshit. We're all bullshit in here. Like realize you're human. And I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Um, and that like all of our emotions are bomb like this is this was like a, a knowledge bomb to me basically all of your emotions are reflections of how we feel in the moment it's never it's not necessarily a true take on our feelings like our opinions and stuff like that mm -hmm. most of the time it's just like a gut reaction right exactly um, and as I was telling Connie before we got on here, I have been, I finally got my hands on the subtle art of not giving a fuck, which has been a book that was huge. I think this year and last year, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I started, I'm probably about halfway through. And one of the big things he said that when I first read the title of the chapter, I was like, this is going to be interesting. Um, he talks about that you're not special, you know, and, but that's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with having an average life 
The problem is when you put these expectations on yourself and then you don't meet them, all it does is create a bigger issue where you're upset at yourself for not reaching these ridiculously high expectations. And of course he gives an example and I'm sure people out there are going to be upset that I don't remember his name, but um, the guy that got kicked out of Metallica and then ended up being in Megadeth. And so he still was in a band that was very successful that had a lot of followers, but of course it wasn't as successful as Metallica. But because he was basing his success on being more successful than the band that kicked him out, he still didn't feel successful even though he was. So you have to change the way you look at things and your expectations because if you have this high expectation for yourself, all you're doing is setting yourself up to be disappointed. Yeah. And that was actually one of like the points of this level is like, don't take yourself too seriously. Like, cause that's where, you know, you can have that downfall like you just discussed. Yes. And he was still massively successful. So, and for him to think in his mind that he's not, just based on that one idea that he set up from himself is crazy. So Rietta, deep question time, I oh, guess. God. I oh, know, God. right? So is that like the feeling, like, you know, like setting yourself up for like failure, like what you basically all just talked about, why you got off of like Instagram and Facebook, because you're like, they're setting these unrealistic goals for you for like followers and shit. That, yeah, that was part of the reason because you're getting on Instagram and you're it's a constant comparison like, oh, I need to have 10,000 followers. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need that. And when I like I talked about last week, I was under the impression that in order to be a best-selling author, I had to have a half a million followers on Instagram. Well, that's ridiculous. There have been best-selling authors long before Instagram ever existed. So I'm giving myself a goal or a bar, a bar that's ridiculous and that doesn't even necessarily relate to what I want success wise. And yeah. all it does is make me unhappy. Like you're basically setting yourself up for unhappiness because you think that if you don't reach this potential, then it's never going to happen. Exactly. It's and I really know of plenty of authors on Amazon who have just constantly like they put out books like yearly and they just slowly but surely just gain like a mass following and that's how they become like all and then all of a sudden oh i'm seeing their their books and barnes and noble and shit you know sometimes yeah. it happens kind of slowly and i've heard the same thing about like podcasts that's what tom is assuming is going to happen to this that like soon will just be this crazy big thing and we might someday and we might not. You never but know. If, if you set that precedence right from the beginning and it doesn't happen all you're doing is disappointing yourself. So you don't, I mean, you don't want to put that kind of pressure on yourself. And the thing that he was getting about in the chapter about not being special is people are so caught up in being like next great thing. And everybody's meant to be extraordinary that they're not satisfied with the regular things of life. And there's nothing wrong with being satisfied about being married and having kids and having a house over your head and food in your stomach. Like those are good things. Yep. There's nothing wrong with being happy about those types of things. Exactly. Actually, um, I don't, you know, it was probably my dad, honestly, that was basically like, well, like, how can you be happy at basically just like a desk job working for Dell? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, like, oh, aren't you sad that like you aren't a teacher? And so I'm like, absolutely not. To me, a job is a job. I love working for Dell and I like the people I work with. And actually to me, that is more important than like the quote unquote success I could have possibly been as a teacher. Right. And that's actually a perfect example because that was another thing he talked about in the book is people get so set on you have to make X amount of money to be happy. You know, you have to be a millionaire. You have to, and it's like, no, it doesn't change how well your life is if you have $10,000 extra. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, especially because, it, and, and realistically though, the reason why this job is absolute bomb is because it's decent money and I work from home. I get to go and throw in a load of laundry, you know? I get to have lunch with Tom who I wouldn't be able to see if it wasn't for the fact that I work from home. Right, exactly. See, so you're looking at the good sides of it. And if I was so focused on just becoming a best-selling author, 
then I would have stopped writing because the first book isn't a bestseller yet, but I don't want to stop writing. And yeah, just because the first book isn't, doesn't mean book six won't be, you know? Well, and, and also it, it also doesn't mean that as time goes by, you won't get like more and more followers. Like, cause I go back and read people's like older stuff from like these really decent authors that have like on kindle unlimited because it's what i pay for because i read so much but like you still go back and like oh okay what am i gonna read it doesn't mean it won't ever get to that level right exactly <clears throat> and um there are also five ways that you can help to increase your self-awareness and obviously these are just suggestions you can use them all you can use a couple you can think of your own but just wanted to throw these out there because I saw them when Connie and I were researching and I thought they were great. Um, one of them is to create space and time. So basically like we kind of already talked about connecting with yourself daily, avoiding distractions um, and just give your, basically give yourself some solitude from all the craziness around you. Another one is practicing mindfulness, which is another topic we've talked about, you know, finding your inner state, um, and even just being mindful in your regular everyday things while you're walking, while you're eating, while you're listening to this amazing podcast. And then number three would be journaling your awareness. Because if you're like me, a lot of times when I write things down, it helps me. So it helps you record your thoughts, record your inner state, and just helps you process through it a little better when you can see it on paper. Some people aren't that way. So if that's not one that appeals to you, it's not one you have to do. And then practice listening. So this is another thing that Connie and I have absolutely talked about, which we talked about, gosh, Connie, when about paying attention to your listener. Oh, or yeah. Pa paying attention to your listener. That's not what I meant. <laughs> paying attention to the person that's talking to you. So instead of trying to think in your head what you want to say as a response, just straight paying attention, observing their emotions and their body language, and don't judge or evaluate until they're actually done speaking. And then the last thing would just be um, to be to gain a different perspective. So asking for feedback from people around you, get information on how people view and see you. And yeah, that'll help you figure out your self-awareness. And like Kanye and I are going to talk about next, uh, you can take the test, the uh, emotional IQ test. And Psychology Today offers this test. It is a longer test. It's probably what, Connie, at least half hour, 40 minutes, because it's like 146 questions or something no, like that. it's 160 something questions, 167. There you go. Oh, yeah, it was a big one. It took, took me a couple of hours because I was doing it in between work. <laughs> work a little bit, answer a question, work a little bit, answer a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it took you a little longer because you were oh, yeah. multitasking. But I did think a lot of like the questions were good. It made me, yeah, it made me think of my self-awareness. Ha <laughs> ha. Ha ha. No, ha -ha. It, made, it made me think of it too. And be because they're giving you examples in the test, like here's a scenario, how would you react to it? Uh, I felt like that was actually a really good way to gauge it because it, you actually had to think about the scenario, think about, you know, close your eyes, put yourself in that scenario and go, okay, what would I do? And then read the options and pick the best one. And not only did it want to know how you feel would you would react, but how the person in the story you think should react. So it's getting both yeah. like, reactions. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, I feel like I was pretty accurate, but like that office one that I told you, like, I don't know if I would be that ballsy to be like, Hey, no, that was like, yeah, I thought of that idea too. Like, I don't know how, yeah, no, I felt that way too because there's a big part of you that wants to stand up in the middle of the boardroom and make a huge scene, but there's also a part of you that's like, well, I mean, I guess it's not that big of a deal, but that also depends on your personality. There are part, there are some people that are going to stand up and be like, wait a fucking minute, that was my idea. <laughs> like, I think, and also what I think matters is the company that you're working for because like my old job, I for sure wouldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. Um, because it was a lot more ruthless. Uh, but like this job, I probably would. Yeah. That's like, I, I did work, a, I did learn a lot from working for, her. I worked for a crazy bee for like two years. And looking back now, I wish I would have quit a lot sooner, but I guess it did tell me, it did teach me to be more self-aware and teach me not to take crap from people because I was like the usual person like, oh, I'm five minutes from home and I make good money and the commute short and it works with my schedule. So you come up with all these reasons of why you should keep it. 
instead of why your happiness should be more important than keeping this job where somebody treats you like shit. So oh, yeah. that's a huge self-awareness. I was so concerned about the money I was making and this, that, and the other that I didn't, that I was not self-aware of how miserable the job actually made me until mm -hmm. grandpa's funeral. And she gave me a hard time about going home to grandpa's funeral. So I said, that's it. You get three days notice. I'm done. Good for you. It was like the final straw that was like, okay, I died for two years. You broke, you, this is the straw that broke the camel's back. I'm not doing this anymore. And now you don't get notice. I'm not going to give you two weeks. Good for you. Yeah. It, it, it's also funny. Like my old job, I didn't realize how miserable I was until I got my new job. I was like, and how much it affected me mm -hmm. because I would get many panic attacks talking to my new boss who absolutely loves me. Mm -hmm. Like who never has anything super like mean to say. He's very like constructive. He's a very nice guy. And I would have many panic attacks before our monthly meeting because of what my old job did to me. Like, it's like, wow. Like, oh yeah, I'm not going to have a panic attack now every time I have to talk to my boss. Right. And you shouldn't feel that way. Yes. And I felt that way at my last job. So I'm like, holy shit, how different is that? Right. Exactly. And you shouldn't feel that way. I, I know we say this and it's not really the best analogy, but life is too short for you to be unhappy at your job and you need to be self-aware. And it's not just about how much money you make or this, that, and the other, your happiness and your feelings and your self-awareness matter. So why, you know, basically mm -hmm. why do it? Yeah. And at the other job, like, I think I blinded myself. I was like, well, I really like some of these people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have a relative who works there. They're never going to get rid of me. Like, it's fine. This is right. all fine. And it really, like, actually wasn't. Right. I didn't realize how toxic it was until I was out and in a different environment. Yeah, exactly. And that was the same with me with my old job when I stuck around with crazy lady for two years, I was so, I was so convinced that everything was good and it was good enough that I never even realized how unhappy I was, how toxic it was. It was not only just toxic at work, but to my family. Cause then you go home and you're like, Oh my God, honey, guess what crazy bitch did today? You know? <laughs> yeah. So then not only that, you're taking it home with you. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think in the moment though, it's hard sometimes, and that's what self-awareness is all about. Sometimes it's hard to realize it in the moment because you, uh, and that's what the third level is all about is your brain is constantly rationalizing for you there. It's constantly yes. validating your job choices. Like we just talked about all that kind of stuff. So I guarantee you, yeah, I didn't realize it because I was rationally in my head. Well, I work with some really nice people, you know, right. I do a pretty good job. Like there's really no large reason for why I should ever be let go. And then I was let go. <laughs> right. Exactly. And that's when you realize it is after because you're rationalizing it the whole time. And that's what three is all about. It's just trying to realize that you are constantly rationalizing and like bullshitting so that things fit into the construct your mind has built basically basically yeah that's like even now um i get i'm i'm not technically working i mean i i do my own thing but i don't have a eight to five or nine or whatever you want to call it like a basic job and there are so many times where i get in my head and i'm like oh well, i should have a job because i don't and i'm a slacker and i'm you know i'm not doing this that and like that's ridiculous just because I don't have a job doesn't mean I'm not doing things important. I'm not, I'm not taking care of my family. It's, it's these expectations that we put on ourselves that are so heavy that we have to constantly be doing stuff. And that was another reason I didn't like Facebook and Instagram. Everybody's posting up these picture perfect worlds and you're like, well, I'm not doing that. So I must not, de must not be good enough. And I'm not doing that. So I must not be good enough. And it's just too much. It's insane. It's insane, basically. And I was literally driving myself insane, going, oh my God, I should have a job. I should be providing for my family. And it took my husband literally going, babe, I'm deployed. You're keeping the whole house together. It wouldn't be there if it wasn't for you. 
that is your job, like job. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Well, that, that's another thing is that the whole like job thing, that's just a construct. Yes. It's a construct that you're told that you have to have. And yes, like most people need to have a job, but you're lucky enough to where you don't. They have a job in in, in the, the typical sense. Yeah, in the typical sense. Yeah. And, and you know what it was I thought was really funny? I don't remember if it was like a TV show or an article or what, but somebody was like, nobody puts a monetary value into women keeping house. And like and I think it was actually like a TV show. They're like, yeah, so what what do women get? Like you get trashed on if you work if you're a stay at home mom. Yeah. And like that's not right because you don't even realize how much money that actually alleviates from the household because you don't have to pay for daycare and shit like that. Right. I think it just comes to, and obviously my dad means no harm by it, but he's like, why aren't you working? Don't you feel, don't you feel like you should be working? Wouldn't it, you know, don't you feel like you should be doing something? And then it puts that thought in my mind that I'm worried about what he's thinking about, which is, you know, your external Mm -hmm. self-awareness. And I'm coming to the conclusions that like, oh, he's asking me these questions because he thinks that I'm being lazy because I'm not working. And then I'm making up this stuff in my head instead of just taking it in and going, well, I'm happy. I, I actually have the opportunity right now to write and do my own thing and make my own business. And I should take advantage of that. I, you know, a lot of people would kill to have that opportunity. Hell yeah. So it's just, it's getting stuck in those, you know, and what other people are thinking about you, which is a, a thing that I have a big problem with. I'm always wondering what other people are thinking about you, which is being too externally self-aware. Yeah. And also, I mean, come on. I feel like, especially for girls, I I don't mean for this to be sexist, but it is. Girls (laughs) are taught, I feel like from a very young age, that we need to be aware of what other people, specifically men, think of us. Mm -hmm. So it's ingrained in us to worry about what other people think because you're also taught like you want to be liked you want to be cute you want to be loved Mm -hmm. and to get that you have to be like you have to be placating you know you have to placate to the other person and stroke their egos Mm -hmm. and that's where we become so (laughs) self-aware self-aware of other people and what other people think of us Mm -hmm. exactly because it's basically ingrained in us basically yeah Yeah. exactly Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that was our, all our main points. Did we miss anything? I think we covered a lot. Yeah. Well, that means you need to recap. Ha <laughs> uh-huh. 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 So there are basically, there's just three levels, man. And you know, Three levels to the internal. Yes. There's internal and external. And then there are three levels of internal. And it's basically distractions, feeling, and knowing what's real. Actually, I like the article. The last sentence said, um, like, something about, like, uh, know what's real or something. I was like, hey, that's like our podcast. How do you know when shit gets real, bro? (laughs) See, it all matches up. And, you know, make sure to use the things that we suggested. You could use some of them, a couple of them. And be self-aware, but I would also cash in to not be too self-aware because i think it's a very fine line of drowning in your feelings and being a functional human (laughs) yeah absolutely and like connie said um if you want to take the emotional iq test you can find it on psychology today it should take you between 30 minutes to 45 minutes depending Um, on how quickly you answer yeah depending on how quickly you answer and that'll give you um an idea of where you are and what you could work on. And if you do have a therapist, you can even go over your results with the therapist and dive really deep into it if you wanted to. Oh, scary. (laughs) I know, right? But um, it'll help you in the long run, even though it may seem scary talking about it, figuring it out, understanding yourself. The more you understand yourself, the the more happy and functional you're going to be, you know? Yep. So, you know, this is uh, how to deal and shit gets real. And don't forget to stay real and be self-aware. Be sure to check us out every week.